In the previous video, we discussed the two models used in Kalman filter. Now, we will discuss Kalman filter pipeline, the algorithm itself. Kalman filter algorithm consists of two steps. The first step is called a prediction step. And second step is an update step. Or sometimes it's called a correction step. In the prediction step, I will use the motion model in order to predict the state vector at the next time step. can be done using the deterministic part only of the motion model. So here, as we see, the predicted step, the predicted state vector, and it's called the predicted state vector at time step k plus 1 given the estimated state vector at time step k is equal to a times the previous estimate of state vector. As it's clear, I used only the deterministic part from the motion model in order to predict the state vector at the next time step. Now, this prediction is not accurate, is not true. It has some errors, and this error, the error in prediction, can be characterized using what's called covariance matrix. So the predicted covariance matrix can be calculated using this equation. And as we see, I use the transition matrix from the motion model and the diffusion matrix from the motion model along with the process noise, process covariance, process noise covariance matrix from the, from the motion model in order to calculate the covariance matrix of the estimated error of the or of the error in estimation. So since it's a recursive algorithm, I use the previous estimate at time step k in order to calculate predict state vector and predicted covariance matrix. This is a prediction step. And as expected, the estimated values here are not correct. And I will correct them or update them using the measurements that I will get from my sensors. So suppose I got a new measurement. The first thing I need to calculate something called Kalman gain. Kalman gain can be calculated using the following formula. And as we see, it depends on the predicted covariance matrix measurement matrix H and measurement noise covariance matrix R. Kalman gain plays an important role in the estimation process because it will determine whether I should trust more in motion model or in observation model. More details about the rule of Kalman gain will be discussed in the next video. After calculating Kalman gain, I will update my state vector using this gain. And it can be updated using this formula.
Okay. So this difference, this difference between the measurement I got and what I predict to measure. The measurement I got and what I predict to measure is called innovation. And to calculate this innovation, I use the measurement matrix from the observation model. This formula will give me the estimated state vector at time step k plus 1. In order to describe how much I trust about this estimation, how much I'm quite sure about this estimation, we need to update the covariance matrix. That can be updated using the following formula. So this formula uses the previous predicted covariance matrix and Kalman gain in order to update the covariance matrix of the state vector, of the error in estimated state vector. Let's wrap up what we have discussed so far. Kalman filter pipeline consists of two steps, prediction step and update step. In prediction step, I use the motion model in order to predict the state vector at the next time step. Since this kind of prediction and I know that um, I have some noises, process noises in my motion model, so I should calculate also what's called covariance matrix. The covariance matrix means how much I'm sure about my predicted state vector. And as we see here from state vector and the covariance matrix, I used matrices A and G from the motion model in order to calculate X and B. And it's very important, uh, uh, very important notice when we come to extended Kalman filter. The second step is the update step or the correction step. First I calculated what's called Kalman gain using the predicted state vector, measurement matrix and measurement noise covariance matrix R. After that, I updated my state vector using what's called the innovation, which is the difference between what I measured and what I predict to measure. The last step is to update the covariance matrix itself using the Kalman gain and the predicted covariance matrix. In next video, we will have some reflections about KF performance. Okay, so see you later.